Christy from Joyful Arts Studio in Northern Art, California, and I have a teaching studio here where I do all kinds of art projects and crafting and home decor, anything that we can get our hands on and share with our community to bring a little color and fun into their um, daily life is our passion. So today, Amy has invited me here to do a fun little project and I have this old Art Deco style nightstand that I wanted to transform and you can tell that it has been um, it's been given a few lives. There's several layers of paint here and I am just going to paint over all that and one of the beautiful things about Amy's products are you can do just that. You do not need to prep a lot with these paints that I'm going to be using today. I did go ahead and give it a good clean and what I used was this Clean Slate by Amy Howard and what I did was I saturated this lint-free cloth here that is clean and I just gave it a good rub all over. There's no need to use any sandpaper or any kind of abrasive other type of cleaner or scoring and we're going to go ahead and add some of her one-step paint and if you haven't used her one-step paint it is an amazing paint it is first of all it smells amazing it's like candy and it's called one-step paint not because it is one coat but that you only have to do one step which is paint. I, you notice that I did hardly any cleaning. All I did was wipe it down with the rag and we are already ready to paint. And so today I'm going to be using two colors. I love this green, which is, let me put on my glasses here. This one's Brooks Gray and it is a beautiful sea blue. I don't know if you can see that, but it is like a deep, beautiful turquoise. One of my favorites. And this one is green. And unfortunately, I have ripped the tag and I can't remember the type of green, but I will definitely let you know before this is over. But it is a gorgeous, you know, soft, earthy green. That's going to look great. And so my thoughts are I'm going to do the lighter green on top and then transition into this beautiful turquoise. And I think it's going to be a stunner. And so I have this great paintbrush that Amy makes right here. Nice, big, soft, I mean, big, stiff bristles, but um, it's very nice. And none of the bristles are going to get out onto your project. And I'm going to get this to the side and I'm using a little plate because I don't want to dip into here. I'm going to start at the top and then transition down to the bottom. So I'm just going to put some of these colors here. And as you can see, I am, if you can see my other aprons, they are covered in paint because that is my napkin. So. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip this bristly brush into my paint and I'm going to, you know, it's kind of hard to tell what way the um, grain is going on this piece anymore because it honestly has so many coats. So I'm going to assume based on just the way many furniture pieces are made that the grain is going across and I'm going to do a nice thin layer. I don't want it to be super thick. It's always better to do a couple thin coats than to do a super heavy coat and wait for that to dry. So we're going to do a thin coat and then we are going to let it dry, which won't take long. This is a paint that will dry very quickly. I'm just going to turn this a little bit so I can get this little piece over here. 
And as you can see, this brush is great in getting in all of these little nooks and crannies. So I always tend to be a little bit um, frugal when I pour it out on my plate because I never want to waste paint. So I'm going to go across here and I'm leaving my drawers in. Give this a good swirl, get in there in my little handles. Make sure my brush strokes are going with what I assume is the way the wood grain is going to go so that any of those brush strokes just add to the piece. So what, have you all used these products before? Have you used this one step paint? What are some other ideas that you have and have loved it on? And I am going ahead and putting it down here too. I am gonna come in with that dark green over it, but I'm going to first just get this side real quick. Any little nooks and crannies, you can just kind of twist it in there. Just those, you know, sometimes these old pieces that have had many lives and stories to tell could um, have little nooks, nicks and marks and dents and scratches. And to me, that's the beauty of it. That's what I love about upcycling these pieces. I'm gonna come around there really see going up and down assuming the green is going to be going that way so this piece I do not even know the stories on this this piece was in my friend's garage and I was looking for some pieces just to play with and see what I could come up with and this gorgeous piece was one of them that she gave me so I I didn't even ask she just said I have this old Stand. So I'm coming in and I'm just kind of feathering it up on this layer. I'll get more particular in the next layer. But for this one, I am just doing an undercoat, nice thin layer here. such a stunner. Okay, so I've just got these base coat on and I'm gonna go ahead and do another quick coat and I'm gonna speed that up for you so you don't have to 
watch me do it, but I'm going to do the top in the light green and then in the Brooks gray. Okay, so now I have it where it's got some of this gorgeous green on the top and that gray on the bottom. And I'm going to blend this centerpiece now. So how I'm gonna do that is I've got a little bit on each. And I'm gonna load up my brush with the green first and come down this way. And it's already, since my paint is a little bit wet, blending. In. See that? I'm going to brush a little bit of that on there down there because that green and blue are blending together. And I like the two colors together, so. Touch a little bit up here. Not a ton, because I don't want it to be, it's kind of got a fun texture in there. So now I'm still touching in this celadon down here and I'm gonna come on up. So I have that gray, that Brooks gray, which is in my brush. So it's automatically blending with that green kind of as a dry brush a little bit having catching on some of that texture not a ton of paint on my brush to catch on that edge. I'm going to get this excess off here and then I am going to come down here a little bit and clean that up. I'm going to get a smaller brush in a minute and touch up inside those handles, but for now, come around this side so I can see. be fun on a canvas even just for some home decor items. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of coming in here and dry brushing in spaces where I am seeing too much paint or to where I don't think it's blended or I don't like the texture. I'm adding a little more green.
kind of going back and forth till I get the effect I would like. I'm going up and down on these corners here because that is the way the wood would kind of go. So check it out. How's that looking? So I'm loving all the texture that we've got and the imperfectness of it and how that lime green kind of shows through that deep turquoise of the Brooks Gray. And so now what we need to do is I'm going to just run like a, a really mild sandpaper over it just to kind of I use even just a, I think this is like 800, nothing big, just to kind of burnish that paint a little bit. And it, I don't want to sand it enough to take anything off, which is partly why I'm using the 800. Just kind of gives it that, it's really buttery. And then I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this, just kind of go over my whole piece. I'm just feeling where I've hit. And then we're going to seal this baby with some of this beeswax. This Mind Your Own Beeswax. I really love this sealer. It is so easy to apply and it just is, dries pretty quickly and then so easy to buff it out. 
So, and then it just has this nice buttery soft feel. And the nice thing is this project with this paint, I have only been working on it for about an hour and a half, if that. So that being said, not much time to wait for drying. That, that paint just dries beautifully and swiftly. And then the beeswax, I'm going to let this guy dry and just cure overnight. I wanna make sure that, oh, there's no moisture that I'm trapping in just in case, even though it feels really nice and dry. I don't want to risk any moisture coming out. And I'm just wiping off that extra dust from the sandpaper. There wasn't much at all with my, my lint-free rag. And we're gonna let this cure. And then overnight, we're going to let it dry just to be 100% sure, although it already feels dry to the touch. And then we're gonna come back and seal it with this Mind Your Own Beeswax. Be right back. All right, so we have painted this with our greens and our gray which is really a deep blue and then let it dry. I sanded it and now we are ready to wax it. I let it sit overnight and cure. And so I just have a clean rag, lint free. And I'm going to put some on my rag like so. And then I'm just going to really Spread it out and rub it in. And you want just a thin layer. You don't need to cake it on. It'll just be tacky. We just want it to absorb and go through that top coat. And sometimes it's kind of tricky to see where you're at. So if I kind of shift my eyes and my head a little bit, I can tell if there's any dull areas. And you can, you can even feel that I didn't put a ton on there. It should already feel nice and smooth. So I'm going to comb and get in all these nooks and crannies with my fingers. Spreading that out. And so we're going to let this dry for a bit. And it says on here... Allow to dry maybe 15 minutes tops, and then you can come right back in and buff it out. And so it is a quick way to seal it. I wouldn't set anything wet on it, or I'd kind of let it sit for a few days at least to cure and really harden, but um, you can definitely buff it right after that 15 minute drying window. And you can tell when you get it on there that that color just, it kind of deepens the color some too. So pretty. And it's non-toxic, which is great for using inside.
I'm just going to shift this so you can, I want to put my back to you, get this side real good. And then you're going to be good. All right. Well, please make sure to drop any questions you have for me down below in the comments and I will get back to you and answer those for you as you put them up. And then for buffing, you're just gonna kind of come in and it'll work best once it's given an opportunity to dry about 15 minutes. And I'm excited to read and see what ideas you have to use this One Step Paint by Amy Howard. And I just appreciate so much that she had me here today. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.